Hello fellow plant scientists. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist with a plant science minor and on this channel I like to take that science and apply it to all things plant care. So if you like the sounds that be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, give this video a thumbs up, and let's just jump straight into the details. So today's video we are going to be talking about fenestrations and exactly how to get more of them and kind of the tactics you can try, some of which I can promise you will surprise you. But because this is a science channel, first we gotta get into the plant science of what causes them, why they exist, and that will help us better understand what tactics we can use to make more. And the reason why I like to add the science to all my videos is because sometimes stuff might click in your head at home and think, hey, Maybe I should try this. Maybe this would work. And then you can let me know in the comments below what your idea is and we can actually discuss it and decide if your theory may be correct. So it allows us to perform our own uh, science experiments at home. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So everyone's going for the holy look. The holy look is in. It's that Swiss cheese, beautiful Adansonia, Oblica. Uh, like, oh, bleh, mm, yum. It's so odd looking. It's so exotic. It's so tropical. It looks like a caterpillar decided to have a feast, but you get it, just, they, they didn't. And it, it's beautiful. It's, it's the Raffidophora look. It's just, it's a gorgeous looking leaf, regardless of what plant it's on. But what causes it? So, the actual definition for what fenestration is, is it's a lack of cell tissue and whether that cell tissue just never developed or it died off in the early stages it doesn't matter it's just a lack of tissue it is not a rip that is not true that is a common misconception so when i say it's not a rip it should not be confused with something like a banana tree leaf or a birds of paradise leaf which is actually designed to rip to withstand the high winds. But it also should not be confused with a compound leaf, which would be a pinnate or a palmate leaf, which technically each one of those uh, fenestrations would be considered a separate leaf with a separate petiole. So not to be confused with the ripping design of a birds of paradise or a banana tree, but also not to be defined or confused with the compound pinnate palmate style leaf. Kind of a fun fact um, and maybe not something that you're into. If you're more into the aeroid side of things, you're probably never even looking at the lith up side of things unless you're literally me who loves all plants. And so a lith up actually has a fenestration in it as well. The difference is, is that they have the window over top, which is the clear um, cellulose that is just a protective layer but essentially that look on the top of the lith up is actually fenestrations and that is um lack of cell tissue leaf cell tissue in those areas which acts as a window which allows for actual photosynthesis all down the sides of the plant and not just on these top surface area so that's a little bit of a fun fact fun adaptation that fenestration can exist in plants from the desert but also plants in the tropics what are they like seriously what why are they there why do they exist and this i found this so interesting i didn't know the answer to it i just would have assumed for high winds but once you start digging into it start really tearing into some of these pa research papers that people have done i mean the wind isn't logical so i'm going to be going through five different theories that have been presented let me know in the comments below which one you think it is i'll let you know which one i think it is at the end but i just find them all very interesting this kind of shows how scientists and plant science has evolved over the years and how we've changed how we look at stuff so the first and uh, most obvious would be to ensure that leaves don't rip in high winds, which is what I would have thought initially if you were to just ask me and be like, oh, to stop the ripping. But this has actually been considered completely debunked. And the reason for this is because most plants that have adapted to high winds have adapted in two ways. 
First way being like a palm tree and being able to basically fold in half and not snap. And the second way is actually through ripping. So the actual tearing of the leaves along the intersection between the two veins. So a bird of paradise is a very good example of this. In jungles, it's not typically a windy space to begin with just because of the volume of trees and foliage. So it's very unlikely that a monstera or an ansodia, oblique, anything like that would have to adapt to high winds. It's just, they're simply never really exposed to them. And in a jungle setting, there's very few plants that have that adaptation to begin with anyway. So high winds is considered completely debunked and null and void. So the second theory, which I find really interesting, was actually considered to be water control and as a, a method of hydrology. So it was meant to maximize the amount of rainwater is the theory that will reach the roots, which makes sense because if it hits the leaves, it falls through the holes or the fenestrations in the leaves, then it will just hit the roots eventually. So it was kind of, that theory was in place as a way to redirect water to the roots to ensure that all the water ends up in the roots. And if you watched my moss pull video, we already know that this has been debunked because the roots, the aerial roots on these plants are unbelievably adaptive to this whole scenario of rainwater. And because since we watched that video, we already know that the dead cells on the outside of the leaf that kind of give it that gray look actually can retrieve water and nutrients within seconds of rainwater touching it. So, that whole theory of trying to gain more water, more nutrients is considered null and void by a lot of scientists in the world of monsters and the holy fenestrations and leaves. The third theory, I, ooh, I never would have thought of this, but I find this one really interesting as well. And it is the theory of turbulence and that the holes would cause turbulence around the leaves, which would then cause a cooling effect. And I love this idea. I think this is so innovative. Um, the person or the group of people that came up with this, I just, I love it. I think it's just the coolest thing. But it's considered, again, very unlikely because the jungle itself is uh, not very high light and it's not very high heat, uh, high humidity, which makes it feel hot, but it's not technically high heat. And plants usually will develop things in the form of uh, more stomata you know, lack of guard cells, that sort of thing to help them with respiration and, you know, cooling off. So it's very unlikely that it's turbulence, but I don't know, that one could be still on the table for me. I kind of find that one interesting. Uh, the fourth theory is that the fenestrations are there to prevent herbivory, which is essentially, you know, animals, insects from eating the plant. And uh, I just, I like the idea of it. I think it's a really cool theory, but I just, uh, it's kind of null and void. The reason it's null and void is because the juvenile leaves on a Monstera deliciosa, uh, Adansonia, all those, Raphidophora tetrasperma, even the one that I have down here, uh, very juvenile leaves are heart shaped. There's no fenestrations in them. They're very simplistic leaves. So it's just the upper leaves that tend to have the fenestrations and the older leaves that tend to have the fenestrations. So Unless it's a giraffe snacking in the jungle, unfortunately, I don't think that that is a, uh, a theory. And the fifth most prevailing is brought forward by Christopher Muir from the University of Indiana. And he believes that it has to do with light and not for the reasons you think it may be. It has nothing to do with more light means more holes. What he actually presented to as a theory is that the holes in the fenestrations in the leaves and the slits in the leaves allow for the leaf mass to get bigger. And once that surface area of the leaf increases, that means it has a better chance of capturing sun. You're probably thinking, well, it has holes all over it. The issue is that when you get giant leaves in a rainforest with heavy rainfall, a lot of foliage falling down, vines, um, just air roots, all that stuff. The holes help make it so that more stuff obviously can fall through and not snap anything, but um, it allows for more surface area. The bigger the surface area, if you've ever watched uh, or been in a forest and you've been on the lower canopy and not the top of the canopy, you'll notice when the light comes through the leaves, it's always moving. 
and you're always going to see this and it the wind will move the leaves and that will cause the sun rays to kind of scatter and move the position of the light in the sky is again going to change where that light's hitting and the larger the surface area of the leaf is the more likely that leaf is to capture some of those scattered rays so in order to get the bigger leaf put a bunch of fenestrations in it and therefore we're able to catch the rays that trickle through and again it just lets it trickle through down through the canopy all the way so that is the prevailing theory right now again we're probably never gonna know what mother nature intended with the fenestrations all i know is i like it i like it a lot but we don't know why so how do we get more well, staking isn't going to make a difference for fenestrations. It really doesn't matter if you stake it or not. You're going to get fenestrations whether you do or you don't. Or fertilizer, it's not going to help either. I mean, it'll help you grow a bigger plant, but it's not going to help you with your fenestrations or even larger leaves in a lot of cases. Watering, again, kind of off the table. Pot size, again, doesn't seem to matter when it comes to fenestrations. It comes down to three things. The first one, no one's going to want to hear, so we'll just get it off like a band-aid. Age. Some of those Monster Deliciosas that you're looking at with the beautiful Swiss cheese plants leaves are decades old. Like, decades old. They're very old plants. They're not 10 years old like the one behind me. They're not, they're, fuck it, they're old. Um, so age is a huge factor in this. So if you can get a cutting of an older plant, you are going to be able to get your fenestrations sooner rather than later. But if you're just buying these from like a Home Depot or Walmart. They're very young plants. You'll be waiting for years. Unfortunately, that's just the case. Sunlight, not in the sense that more sunlight means larger fenestrations. More sunlight just means you can grow bigger leaves. You can get faster growth of a plant. So the faster you're growing the plant, the faster the plant is going to age and the larger the leaves you can get. The larger the leaves you can get, obviously, the larger the fenestrations, the more intricate fenestrations you can receive. So sunlight is a factor um, only in growing bigger leaves. And once you get a bigger leaf, you're going to end up with more fenestration. Simple as that. Last one. And actually the one that I uh, am just starting now to try with my... Uh, monster behind me my raft of four is fine i get lots i actually i think my newest leaf on raft of is getting a mid rib mid rib fenestration which i find really cool and then my adansonia um he's got fenestrations like all over i mean if you don't have a fenestrated adansonia you're definitely doing something wrong there so easy to get to do its job but this guy behind me i have my my slits actually quite a few slits on a number of my leaves but i my mid ribs are very few and far between um so i'm gonna try uh something new so i completely hacked this guy up this summer i've said this in so many videos whatever um i've hacked him up into like a billion pieces and so now this bottom part here is all vines and i used to have leaves on this um from just even a few videos ago that you've probably seen but what i ended up doing is i actually ended up ripping off all the bottom leaves that are small or just not big enough and even some of the newer leaves that i just didn't think made the cut and were tiny and so the theory here of what i've been told um, and what i've read is that when you remove those smaller leaves and you focus your energy just on the larger leaves, fewer leaves, larger leaves, that the plant is more likely to put out bigger leaves because it has less support photosynthesis wise from all these smaller leaves. Um, and therefore it doesn't have to support the smaller leaves, but it also isn't gaining as much sunlight. So it's slightly more stressed out. So once we remove those leaves, the theory is that it will try to produce a larger plant with larger leaves because of the lack of photosynthesis it thinks it's stressed out for light and so therefore it's going to produce a larger leaf and again the goal is larger leaf means more fenestrations so that is what i'm gonna try i'm just i just cleaned it out completely cleaned it out i got only a handful of leaves on there now i'll let you guys know how it works i've 
I mean, I haven't really tried to master the art of big leaves and fenestrations. I just love my plants for how they are. Um, but I kind of want to try now. So I'm going to. So that's what I'm going to do with him. We'll see what happens. I actually think that that theory may be correct. I definitely, when it comes to pruning and trimming plants, plants react really well when you start hacking them up and uh, really changing the level of photosynthesis they get. So um, fingers crossed it works. Let me know if you're gonna try it at home. It may work, I'm not sure. We'll see. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you have a Monstera Deliciosa, Ansonia, Rafta for Tetrasperma, or if they're on your wish list, if you like the Swiss cheese look, or if you're kind of like, eh, that's ugly, it looks like a caterpillar literally attacked my plant and it's just gross. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I mean, I like it, I like it. I think it's interesting, this is like the part of the video where if you care about this channel and you care about me, that you'll, you'll keep watching. But um, what I find most interesting is that uh, pothos, I've seen a lot of pothos on moss poles with huge leaves, especially golden pothos. They can get pretty big, pretty big leaves. I find it really cool how sometimes those leaves end up with fenestrations the larger they get. So time will tell if those leaves get more fenestrated. Um, as they get larger, but I just find that interesting that the leaf size is what's causing the fenestrations for the pothos as well Because um, pothos aren't known to be fenestrated But it seems like people who are you know able to grow the larger size leaves are getting midrib Fenestrations, I'll try to insert some footage or photos of that, but I find that interesting. So I don't know I Yeah I don't know. I don't know. I, I, very interesting thought, regardless of what causes it. I'm not sure. Um, if we knew, then that would take out half the fun of owning plants and being able to experiment with them. So yeah, let me know what, what you guys have tried for getting more fenestrations. I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say. I don't get a ton of light. I'm in Canada. And so, I mean, I light suggestions are kind of eh. For me, I end up having to use a lot of grow lights in a lot of cases, um, just because my windows and stuff, I don't get enough sun. So that's kind of what I'm limited to, but if you have like pruning techniques or like growing techniques that you've tried that work, let me know. I have him on a pole, hasn't seemed to help. So yeah, I'm gonna try this leaf cutting business and see if it does. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, and by the way, I'm doing merch now. Well, I'm gonna try to do merch. I ordered it in, hasn't come in yet. I don't wanna recommend it yet till I get a sample of this stuff, but I have some really cool designs on the way and my friend Cheryl made the design for me and I'm actually freaking in love with it. So I'll talk to you guys later.